Now, an annuity due is absolutely no different in terms of mathematics from an ordinary annuity. There is only one difference here, and that is when the cash flows are actually paid. Right? So with an ordinary annuity, the cash flows come at the end of the period. With an annuity due, the cash flows come at the beginning. And all that means is that there is a specific benefit to receiving an annuity due and, of course, a commensurate cost to paying an annuity due. And that benefit or cost, of course, depending on whether you're paying the annuity or receiving the annuity, but if you're receiving the annuity, the benefit is that you get your first cash flow right off the, right off the bat. So you get the first cash flow before you would if it was an ordinary annuity. Now here's a problem here. I'm gonna work the problem. I'm gonna show you a specific example. I wanna lay out a timeline of the cash flows so that you can see how an annuity do, uh, the cash flows of an annuity do differ from the cash flows of an ordinary annuity and why that means that there's some additional value to an annuity do. Uh, I want to. I want to. Well, so we'll work a problem. Well, I want to see. I want you to see how it works. I want to see. I want you to see the additional value. Um, and of course, you're going to see this again in the homework and the exam. So, so make sure that you uh, you go work this example right here. Okay. Now, uh, when you come back, the there is the the about the same exam about the same explanation that I give in the example problem is here in the slides too, just like normal. Okay. Okay, welcome back. All right, so hopefully you went and watched that example. You know everything about annuities and annuity dues. Uh, and so that means that it's time for us to talk about the second type of financial asset, right? That arise because of intermediate cash flows. And that second type of cash flow is called a perpetuity. And the difference between a perpetuity and an annuity, and this is a big one, right? The difference between a perpetuity and annuity is very simple. A perpetuity has level cash flows that go on forever. An annuity has level cash flows that do not go on forever. And that's the difference. An annuity has a finite length of time and a perpetuity doesn't. So the cash flows of a perpetuity are paid forever, which is not really realistic when we think about okay, like human lifestyle or human lifetime, right? No, no cash flows can be paid forever. However, we'll talk about some scenarios where it may be more realistic to assume that they go on forever uh, rather than try to pick uh, a finite end date for an investment that has the potential to go on forever. Right? So when we talk about stocks and companies, perpetuities are going to come up again. Right? Now, again, math likes infinity. So a perpetuity is a, is a financial asset that has cash flows that go on for infinity. And because math likes infinity, the formula for the present value of a perpetuity is much simpler than the formula for the present value of an annuity. In fact, it's so simple there isn't a calculator function for it because the formula for the present value of an annuity is just the cash flow divided by the rate. And that's it. So the cash flow is the payment, whatever payment we have starting next period. If I'm gonna receive $1,000 per year forever, then C is my $1,000 payment that I'm gonna get forever. And the rate is simply the discount rate. What rate of return are we going to earn on, or are we being charged on this interest, I mean, on this investment? Okay, and that's it, C divided by R. This is a formula that's going to be on the formula sheet. Uh, all you got to do is remember to put it where it goes, but there isn't a specific calculator function for perpetuities because it's just division. While there is, of course, the time value of money is specifically for annuities. Right? So we can look at a really simple example here. I won't jump to a specific video because this is just division, but you can imagine the case where we're promised, say, a dividend from a firm of $20 each year forever, and we're gonna invest it at a rate of 8%. So what's the present value here? Well, it's 20 divided by 0 0.08, that's 8%. And the present value of this annuity is $250. And what that means is I should be willing to pay $250 for the right to receive $20 a year forever. Right? I'd be willing to trade 250 now in order to get $20 a year forever and ever and ever. After I die, my kids collect it. After they die, their kids collect it. Right? That's what a perpetuity means. Now notice that there isn't a future value formula for a perpetuity. Think about why that is. It's because perpetuities don't end. 
There is no future value. Perpetuities don't stop. They go on forever. So the only thing we ever care about from a perpetuity is what the present value is. What the present value of all those infinite number of future cash flows might be. And again, this is going to come up again when we get to chapter 8 and we, uh, and we start to talk about stocks. Okay. Now, there is a way to adjust the perpetuity model so that we don't have to have completely level cash flows, meaning the cash flows don't have to stay the same. We can have a special case of the perpetuity called a growing perpetuity. And the growing perpetuity is exactly what it sounds like. It means that we can grow the rate of the cash flows at a steady rate. Okay, so instead of having level cash flows, we have a level growth rate in cash flows. So the cash flow starts at a dollar and then grows at 10% every year forever. Of course, by the time we get to forever, of course, that cash flow is going to be enormous. But uh, this is a more accurate representation of, of some types of financial instruments. Again, when we talk about stocks, we'll, we'll come back to this formula. So the formula here for growing perpetuity isn't that different. Instead of C divided by R, it is C divided by R minus G, where G is the growth rate. So it's the cash flow that you're going to receive divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate. Okay, so again, pretty simple. Uh, the formula, there's no specific calculator function, but this is on your formula sheet for exams. Uh, so you don't have to worry about memorizing it. You just have to remember what everything is and where everything goes. And you can see that if we go back to our simple problem, we say, okay, instead of just getting $20 per year as a dividend, we're gonna get $20 per year, but the dividend is gonna grow at a constant rate of 5%. So it's gonna get bigger by 5% every year. We can see that the present value of this payment is significantly higher. Instead of $250, it's $667. Because a 5% growth rate forever uh, implies that uh, the, the payments a thousand years from now are gonna be millions and billions of dollars, right? So a huge amount of growth over that length of time, even, at, even with a growth rate as small as 5%. Okay, so we got to be really careful when we talk about this formula. But again, we'll go into way more detail when we talk about stocks. There is also a, uh, an adjustment to the annuity formula so that we can have a growing annuity where cash flows grow. This isn't a formula that I expect you to remember. It's not going to be on the formula sheet. It's not going to be tested. Uh, I just want you to be aware that we can make things as complex or real life as we want. And there are ways to adjust annuities so that we have growing annuities. Uh, here's a formula just so that you can see that that's actually true. Again, there's not something that I'm going to carry uh, from this slide into anything that you'll ever be asked to remember. Okay. Uh, so we've got a big comprehensive example here. Uh, we're going to work a problem a, a, with a more real world face on it where we're talking about buying a company. The company has generating cash flows from its operations. It also has annuities and perpetuities as part of its business model. We want to add all of that up together and calculate the present value of the company because we're interested in buying it. And that's what present value really says. Present value says, what is something worth? And so what we want to know in this problem is, what is this company worth? If we add up all of the values of all of the assets, what would we be willing to pay for this company? Okay, so we're going to work this example and we're going to jump out uh, and then uh, please work it then come back to me.